What do you most remember about the filming of Paths of Glory? Stanley had seen me on German television and um, he phoned my agent and my agent phoned me and said uh, there's a bit part for you uh, in, in, in a film. Just have to sing something in German. But uh, it's an American director and it's very good to do an American film. Young people from Germany then um, had a certain idea of what an American film director might be, something I couldn't possibly describe. So certainly not somebody like Stanley. And uh, I was uh, uh, very impressed in, uh, by some miracles so was he. And we got married. <laughs> and the scene you're in, it, it, it's sort of an expression of humanity and hope at the end of quite a bleak film. Yeah. And were you surprised at all that a Jewish American director yeah. cast a German actress to to provide that? Yeah, I was. I, I, I well, I didn't think in detail um, of the reasons. I thought it was a, a lyrical end to a very harsh film. Uh, by the time I shot the scene. Uh, because he shot in sequence, uh, I already knew him because he'd seen me in, in the theatre in Munich, and um, we had already decided to marry. And after that, I came to America. And what was it like being married to Stanley Kubrick? It was. I, as a result, I was extremely happy, uh, and I uh, had a wonderful life. And why do you think your marriage was such a success? Why does it last so long? We often wondered, because we couldn't have come from more different and more uh, grotesquely catastrophic backgrounds in my case. And uh, uh, so, yes, it was quite a topic. Was he, was he a romantic husband? Oh, yes. I, obviously, you know, I, I, uh, I was lucky. I, 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 I think we both were. I heard somewhere that because he wouldn't fly, you used to, when you did still travel back to America, travel back by the Queen Mary or one of those great yeah. ocean going liners. Great fun. And that you used to dance every night together. We did. He, he was a great dancer, and a, a secret really, but he, he liked dancing. And he was, a, he was a drummer when he was a young man, so he was very musical. Why was it a secret, him being a great dancer? He wasn't a, a flashy person. Uh, he was very gregarious, not like the things they always said about Stanley. He was immensely gregarious. He wasn't in fashionable restaurants. That's the only difference. Unlike a lot of sort of people who are married to somebody who's sort of enormously creative and artistic person, you were also an artist. I was a painter, and so that works very well. And do you think you had an influence on his work? I don't know. I, I think everybody was married for such a long time. I must have had some influence. I heard that you'd come up with the idea of using the Blue Danube in 2001. I did not. I did not. That was Stanley was uh, 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 looking for, you know, he had all these turning images and he wanted to say something like, this is going to be really, by that time, easy. Uh, and he liked waltzes very much. And so he thought of it and he had a whole stack sent to him in his garage where he was cutting the film and he um, listened to all the different conductors and uh, thought that's it, the Blue Daniel, I'm going to use brilliant works. He loved the preparation, he loved the, the cutting, the editing in, uh, enormously and he in part liked shooting but it wasn't his favourite because you're very nervous to use the time properly and he was aware of any second going by and I'm not, it's not going to be there, I won't have it. Uh, uh, so he was tense sometimes during shooting, but uh, yeah, he enjoyed it also. Um, Could he also be distracted by things? I, I heard somewhere that while he was sort of working on Eyes Wide Shut, he became fascinated by the Lewinsky hearings and spent days watching those. Yeah, I think he did. Uh, like he liked dramatic tension of any kind, and if it was real, he liked it in sports, he liked it in politics, 
he uh, hated the war on Iraq and watched every second. And I think he was not the only man that did that. He certainly was somebody who listened to the news all the time and had strong opinions, which he changed from day to day, as anybody who's really intelligent would. Since we only get snippets of the truth anyway, so you have to change your mind all the time. Did he ever use your life as a, as a, as a source? He was for... going to shoot, a he was going to make a film about my uncle, who, 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 who uh, was a film director, a very, one of the best known film directors in Germany. I come from a sort of showbiz family. Veit Haaland was his name, and he made one infamous film, he made many films, and one was called Jud Süß, which he made, uh, and Goebbels was influencing him. Uh, Goebbels wanted him to make the film, told him to make the film, and uh, then changed the film, and the reason he uh, got free out of the trial, famous huge trial in Germany, uh, was because my uncle could prove that he really would have died had he refused, and so would his family. But, um, you know, that's, uh, there were, those were different times. Did Stanley Kubrick meet your uncle? Yes, yes, they met. He was a very impressive man and very funny, and uh, he met the whole showbiz family that I came from, and um, I do in particular remember that he downed a whole toothpaste glass of vodka before he met them. Uh, he was interested in their story, and uh, he thought it would be very interesting to show what it is like when you are living under a dictatorship and you are an important showbiz person and extremely vulnerable, mostly because you also think, because you're talented, that you might be as smart as the people in power big mistake that most actors make. And did, did he, in terms of that research, did he meet any, did he meet other people who'd been implicated in that period? No, no, or? he met an aunt, uh, same uncle's wife, who was um, a famous Swed Swedish film star, Christina Söderbaum, and uh, her life was much threatened and, and it was sort of a big sensation after the war. And so Stanley had read some of these stories and uh, you know, he didn't know all these things, although I had, you know, before he married me, told him everything I represent. Getting quotes is always slightly dangerous thing, but I, 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 one of the things I read about the research he did in the Aryan Papers was one of the projects, which is Yeah, that he great. really wanted to do, yeah. But, you know, it's reported he, he dropped it as a project because of Schindler's List. Yes, but he also, did. Also, you said that he, he found Two. it eventually very depressing. Yes, I, I don't know whether you've ever read the real detail, and it is not survivable. And I remember that Steven Spielberg thought he almost couldn't do it, and he was ill reading up on the detail, as anybody would be. It is not survivable. And it's not, you cannot, and the reason Stanley gave up on it is because um, Stephen's film was about Jews that lived, and just a few. If you tell the whole truth in a film, which is the only way you could honor all these dead people and be respectful enough, you would have to tell the whole truth. You could not do it to the actors, you couldn't do it to the director, and you couldn't do it to the audience it would be all that it was, absolutely unsurvivable, psychologically at any case. And living with somebody who is spending all their working day doing that research, did you find it a dark period and a depressing period? I had already, for all the reasons I just told you, uh, felt it necessary when I was young that I should know it all. And uh, I was 14 when the war ended, so I was that generation that really uh, was angry. And uh, we read everything that you could read and we saw all the hideous films. I mean, they filmed everything. And uh, so I knew what he was in for and he read the whole SS detail catalogs of what they did and photographs and the lot. And nobody, 
can do that without becoming extremely depressed and disorientated. It's really sickening. <laughs>